important for us to go back to reality and truth that is situated in God's word. Today, I'm going to teach you and talk about new beginnings. Um, in the last edition of sharing the word at how we prepare a personal altar, we realized that at the altar, three things happen. There is sacrifice, there is worship, and at the altar is a person, the altar, and a God who appeared. It's very important for us to understand that at the altar, there are things, new beginnings start at the altar. And it is your altar that is going to predict new beginnings in your life. If you don't have any personal altar where you are keeping afresh every time in your life, there will be no new beginnings in your life. That is why a lot of people are going through struggles. They are running to people. So people will tell them what they God wants to say in their lives. You have to stop that one. If you build a personal altar, God will appear for you. Now I want us to go into the scriptures and begin to establish this point. Now in the book of 1 Kings chapter 17 and chapter 18, there's a, a great story about the children of Israel. It has been a time where Israel had sinned greatly under Ahab and Jezebel. And the Bible said, Elijah the prophet appeared on the scene and declared that there will be no rain and there will be no rain on the earth, no dew, according to my word. Until I come back and de declare another word, there will be no rain. Elijah the prophet, by the word of God, locked the heavens for the whole country. And there was no rain, according to scriptures in the book of James, for three and a half years, there was no rain in the land. Now, this is a, a situation where their harvest and their, 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 their plantings and their agriculture and everything they had, has gone worse. There was problem, there was chaos. Um, Jezebel was serving Baal, and Baal was known to be the fruitful God. But when God's word comes on, every spirit that brings anything is crushed uh, uh, upside down. So Jezebel and his uh, Ahab and all the worship dog, they, they couldn't do anything because there's a word of God that is activated through the prophet Elijah. Now, the whole nation begins to suffer. And the whole nation begins to suffer. They begin to look for Elijah the prophet. And the Bible says God took him away. As you follow the discourse and you read from chapter 17 to chapter 8, you realize that Obadiah begins to find Elijah, bring him back to Ahab, and then a discussion ensued that now, if you really want to have God back into your life, then let's have a contest between me and then the prophet of Baal. As the contest enraged, we heard that the prophet of Baal began to pierce themselves from morning to afternoon, and, and then their God was not doing anything, was not bringing anything for them. Then Elijah appeared at the twilight, at the time of the evening sacrifice, the Bible says. And then this is what the Bible says. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 30, that Elijah repaired the broken altar of the Lord. Which means that the people were going through their problems and their calamities because the altar to which they contact God was broken. My brother and my sister, can I suggest to you that your challenges and your situations and the things that are going through that you're not having answers is because your personal altar to the Lord is broken. It is not nobody's fault. It is not the man of God's fault. It's not the one you are going to consult to lie to you. It is your life. It is your personal altar. Your personal altar is broken. And because of that, you can't reach to God and God can't reach to you. The relationship is crashed between you and God. And therefore, you are going to calamities and situations that you don't understand. Now, the, the, the altar was broken. The relationship between Israel and their God was broken. And there was no rain for the agriculture. Their, their cattle were dying. There was no food for them to eat because their altar was broken. Come on, their altar was broken. And, and the Bible said that Elijah began to repair the broken altar. Now, as he began to repair the broken altar, the Bible says that he used 12 stones to represent each tribe in, in Israel. Each of the tribes, 12 stones, like I, I said earlier, 12 stones which has not been polished, which has not been embellished, clearly raised it up, asked them to pour water into the, 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 the go for water and pour it onto the, 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 the altar. And as he has done that, he stood before them and began to cry unto God. He said, Father, you are God that answered by fire. Let everybody here know that you have sent me and have spoken at your word. Now, what the man Elijah was doing, he is bringing something new to the life of the Israelites by activating his altar and the altar of covenant that they have with God. The man Elijah stood there, there was the altar, and there's a God who has to answer. These three things happen at every altar. And as he prayed, the Bible said that fire came from heaven, lit their sacrifice, and then afterwards, we begin to see God appearing for them, and then rain was coming to the land. The prophet of Baal broke him. Now, the point I want to establish is that new beginnings start at your altar. 
It is at the altar. When your relationship with God is revived, there's going to be new beginnings. New beginnings comes when the fresh word from the Lord hits your heart. New beginnings means that there's a truncation, there's an abrogation, there's an end of an old cycle of defeat, of failure, of fear, of losses in your life. Health that is not going well, finances that are not going well, issues that are wrong, there's no job, there are, there are calamities, there are problems in your life, you are sick and, and you are struggling with it. It will end and a new thing will start at your altar. That's what we mean by new beginning. New beginning means that the old struggle ends and a fresh start begins for you. And it's going to continue continually at the rest of your life. If you need a new beginning, at the life of Israelites, the, the, the famine end and there was rain. At the, it was instigated at the altar by the man of God. The same way you are going to have a new beginning. I declare that everything you are going through in your life, it will end when your altar is raised up. And when you can raise an altar unto the Lord, and you can hear a fresh word from the Lord, every sickness, every disease, every failure, every shortcoming, every inability, anything at all that is happening in your life, barrenness, things you have done for years that you are knocking doors, they cannot open. It is at your altar that the fresh word will begin to return or turn the issues around that one. So the answer to a fresh beginning or a new beginning is the altar. It is that the altar that Israel begins to have life again. Ahab and Jezebel and all their thing was crashed to zero when Elijah raised up the altar unto the Lord. If you are to go back to other scriptures, you see that it's the same. It was at the altar when, when Jacob encountered the God. He uh, 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 dreamt and seed ladders of angels going up from heaven. That was his new beginning. He was running away from his brother. He didn't know what was going to happen to him. When he saw that God was there, he encountered, he raised an altar there. My brother and my sister, our life and our personal relationship with God is key to our progress in the future. It is not anybody who talked to us or somebody telling us about ourselves. And then we are following an anointing oil somewhere. We are following some water that is poured somewhere. And we are following what somebody is saying about us. But it is what God is telling us literally in our personal life, in our closet, in our prayer time, in our worship time, it, as we open our hearts to him. I declare to somebody this morning listening to me, your new beginning will start at your altar. It's going to start at your altar. It's not going to start anywhere outside your altar. It's not going to start outside you. It's going to start with you. When you have time, consciously create time. If you have to study the scripture about Elijah, they had time. It was a morning to evening encounter. They had time. They took time to repair the altar. You have to take time to repair your relationship with God. It is time you, you take time to repair your relationship with God. It, some of us go to church occasionally. Some of us pray occasionally. Some of us will read the Bible occasionally. We carry the Bible to church. We never open it. When they call a scripture, you are on the other side. You have a broken altar in your life. And that is why you are struggling. You only need the voice of God that comes from the altar to reorganize and to bring you to a new beginning. God is interested in bringing you a new beginning. To start afresh again. To inspire you again. To raise you again. And to bring you to the expected. Listen, the Bible says that, he said to Jeremiah, I know the thought I think towards you. It's not a thought of evil. It is good to bring you to an expected end. That expected end and the good things God has for you. It is only when you talk to him. It is only when you meet him at that altar. That which you have created deliberately, consciously with your mind. And you are giving attention to it. Don't leave home early in the morning without going to your altar. Don't come back home and go to bed without your altar. Make sure that you are standing at your altar. Because it is at your altar that new beginnings will begin to start for you. I see a lot of us Christians now going to walk into new beginnings. As we begin to open up our heart and our soul and begin to raise new altars unto, unto the Lord. There will be new beginnings in your life. There's going to be freshness in your life. There's going to be open doors in your life. There's going to be grace in your life. I see a lot of us as we begin to revive our prayer lives, personal and individual prayer lives. There's going to be new start for us. Things we are, we are afraid to do, we are going to do them now. Things that we couldn't have access to do, we are going to do them. And where there's no way, God is going to make a way. The voice of the Lord is going to bring direction and inspiration to you. And he's going to show you where to go. In fact, God has how he takes to order your steps. He said, the steps of the righteous man are ordered by the Lord. It is at your altar. May the Lord order your steps. This morning I pray for everyone that is listening. That may the Lord order your steps. May the fresh word of the Lord come to your heart. May there be divine energy in your spirit. May there be renewal in your heart. Even as you will raise up your altar and begin to sacrifice unto the Lord. May the Lord bless you. This is your friend and God's servant, Pastor Diblante, from the Apostolic Church, Ghana, 
Rehoboth Assembly. We are situated at Sakaman Blue Lagoon. It's a pleasure to come your way again, and I'll be back again. The Lord bless you. Hello friend.